Chasing the Sun season two, episode one was really good. I'm enjoying this series and it's just nice to pick up leaving off from the season one to season two. I'm checking out each day, which is really, really cool to me. And I really love how this one started off as describing the nation that is still struggling in South Africa. They're talking about the, the poverty levels, the unemployment rate and how the society and how the the system of uh, South Africa is essentially struggling. And what I really loved is how they interweave that with the hope that the Springboks and their success has on a nation because it gives the nation something to believe in. It gives them that hope and really becomes ingrained and embedded in their, in their psyche and makes them continue to fight and find the next step in each day because of having and living in an environment where it's tough, like you're going through those types of situations. It's hard to find the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And I feel that they did a fantastic job highlighting the, the struggles of South Africa, what they're going through as a nation, and then really tying that into how they find light in their nation and find that next step, that hope and that perseverance as a nation. They're a very strong, tough nation and the box give them that light. And I really just appreciate how the players take that on as as their mission like they're wearing the jerseys beyond on the game it's to inspire an entire nation they're fighting for a nation it's like they're putting the country on their back and moving them forward and that's what i really loved about how the start of the episode began and it's the it's the week or the opening week of the world cup so they're in france they're in marseille they're playing a very tough scotland team and there's a lot of turmoil happening in a sense because scotland is a, is a top ranked team in the world and they're basically in put in a pool of just like a straight killer like what do they call murder murderers row where you have the top teams in the entire world all in the same pool and having uh, to play scotland their first match is one of those games where they have to win or they're sitting on the edge of their seat the entire time to get out of that bracket and so there's a lot of game planning and strategy and preparation that went into it and it was just so cool to see you know you all know i love of the love the whiteboarding sessions really breaking down a team from an offensive standpoint defensively like all phases of the game and i really love how the springboks they really highlighted their ability to put so much time and preparation in getting into this game because as we know finn russell is like the ultimate captain of scotland just a, a, a magician on the field making plays happen and they're talking about where they have to figure out how to take away that ability from him just being hard-nosed being aggressive and not giving him the space that he needs to think on the fly and make these things happen but just being in his face and pounding him um from the time the game starts to the time it ends so he's he's working on on his heels and not so much in a place of having to think and be that 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 um that master puppeteer moving the pieces on the on the pitch and making plays and opportunities happen so that was really cool to see how their setup was and the the planning and film breakdown that went into that and from you i really love seeing like that that coaching aspect because i know we highlight the athletes a lot because we're they're the ones that we see on the day-to-day -day basis going out there and making it come to fruition i really love how we're seeing the management side of the game as well and seeing the stress that that they undergo day in and day out pre uh, prepping their athletes to be ready for that match and putting them in the best possible advantage and that's what's so cool to see it goes from not only just razzy and and the defensive and the 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 prop all the coaches that are involved but i really love the the strength and conditioning side that they showed as well they went through some grueling practices where they're just like the athletes are looking at them like what the hell are you doing to us right like some of their most grueling toughest practices that you can imagine and that's where you know the strength and endurance comes are those is busy being physically prepared and your strength and conditioning coach pushing you to far beyond your limits and just testing you that's where that that grit is built up and i love that they really highlighted that because getting an athlete prepared for the for the longevity of the game for the duration of the game taking those hits taking those knocks and getting back up and being able to have your legs undo you by the time though the whistle blows is massively important and i know they touched a little bit on that um well south african wasn't known as the the most conditioned team uh prior to the 2019 world cup and they really got them dialed in to win that 2019 world cup i see how they've continued to keep that theme of being a well-conditioned well-oiled system and that's just giving them the leverage to continue to grow as a nation and grow as a team and really 
really you know take advantage of the opportunities when you know at the end of the game the 20th minutes or last 20 minutes left 10 minutes left they still have their legs under them where they're not burnt out as, as they say like that poison isn't in your legs anymore and i really love how they highlighted that and it's super cool to see that they're they're doing that and i just really feel like to me the highlight of this episode one was the story of Manny Libuk and his background. And it's so interesting to see that a lot of these athletes, they come from, especially the ones they're highlighting, like a poverty background and how the game of rugby itself, there's no, there's no um, separator. You can be, come from a, a poverty background or you can come from a, what, how, they, how do they pronounce it? A high society background, right? But when you come together, you're just a unit. You're a team, you're one. No matter where you came from, the adversities um, that you come from in life or the whether it's high or low, you all they all come together as a team and support one another. And that camaraderie is built in that locker room and they all trust, believe and support one another. I think that's vast, that's, that's, that's a huge importance, right? Knowing that the man standing next to you, the coaches, the staff, you're all in with the same mission and the same vision and you support one another and no matter what the background you came from so i love that they went into to manny libuk's background story of him being raised by his grandmother um not having not having his dad and his uncle giving him that that first springbok jersey and him just wearing it and it, it becoming part of who he was like his identity his core and he told himself as a young kid that I will be i will play for the springboks one day and for him to make the decision at a young age because you know when you're a kid you're running around doing all the fun stuff with with your friends doing all the fun activities living the living the life of a kid running around having fun creating chaos for him to have that insight and um that discipline to make the decision that he was willing to to give up having fun give up doing all the exciting stuff and focus on developing the discipline and whatever it took to get onto the Springboks national team and actually become a starter. Absolutely incredible for, for a kid that age to make that decision, to, to plant his flag and make a decision that I'm going to work towards my long-term vision. If it means sacrificing all the short-term fun, I know I'm going to sacrifice what it is, what I have, what it is now that the kids are having fun to be able to enjoy the life that I want and the, achieve the vision that I want from a long-term perspective. And that just takes, man, it just takes a lot of support, background, discipline, um, and just a bigger vision on yourself and having that trust, right? And just uh, honestly, like the luck for that to happen because, and I, the reason why I say luck is because to make a, a nation team, how many players are in South Africa playing the game of rugby that excel at, a, at, at that level, like an exceptional level to be able to, beat out all of those those people that you're competing against to be able to stay healthy in that process because i've gone through i blew my i blew my knee out in high school and love, i was fortunate enough to rehab well well enough to play college football and finish that out successfully and healthy to be able to avoid injuries like severe injuries that are that can take you out of the game and being in the, the right condition circumstances to where you're healthy your your body holds up um and you're not pulled into any other distractions in the world that's very fortunate and it's so awesome to see like a player like manny was able to you know over overcome his his poverty background and achieve his vision and his dream that he set out for as a young kid by receiving that jersey and the cool part of like this documentary is that they take you through all the steps that lead you into the game which is that what we see on on the television as spectators and by manny wearing the the uniform i saw that he struggled that game from the documentary standpoint it looked like he left nine points on the field just from he had a, he had a rough day of kicking right now i mean that happens from time to time and then Foff said okay manny i'm i'm, I'm gonna step in i want to allow you to focus on playing the game focusing on your output in the game because he was having an exceptional game outside of his kicking and for a team to do that to have players support you and not beat down on you in that moment because in that moment you're already losing confidence right you're losing confidence he's rushed by that shot clock or that kicking clock and for your teammates to step up and say hey you're having a hell of a game 
brush the kicking off. I'll, I'll step in and take and take ownership of that. And you just focus on creating plays on the field. He's wearing, you're wearing a number 10. Go, go be the general on that field and make plays happen. For them to have that type of camaraderie and, and trust in one another, I think is incredibly massive. And I really love that part of the documentary where you're able to hear what's going on in the process because you're not seeing all the calls that are happening on the field, all of the connections and, and inner workings of a team and the players' dynamic. But being able to hear Foff, you know, say that in the interview as he's being talked to, Manny saying that, and watching how the events unfolded after uh, the, the kicking woes that Manny was having when Foff took over, then Manny just like sort of harnessed like, okay, I'm having a spectacular game. For him to make that no look kick all the way to, to Ardenser on the edge, which broke the spring box open, that was incredible to see. I absolutely love that moment. And it just showed that the team had each other's backs, right? The team had each other's backs. It was not about the, it was not about us, an individual's play. It was about the team. It was about the unit. They're playing for something bigger. I absolutely love that they did that. To me, it showed leadership, accountability, trust. It showed all of those components that you need to have a solid team and have that that friendship, that camaraderie, that family. That is more like not even friends, just like a family unit, really, because that bond that they have with one another was really highlighted. And I just really uh, appreciate how they were able to uplift. And I tell you, they South Africa as a team was able to uplift Manny in that moment. And even as you go to the press comments conference where um, C is talking about what goes into what goes into um, the mindset, what goes into the, the conversations they're having on the pitch, he says it himself that it's about uplifting uplifting that individual on the team you're there to support one another you have the trust and you have the faith they have players that can step in to those positions at those moments if somebody is having a down day i love that he highlighted that everybody has a down day so if somebody's down in that day or that moment another player can step in and fulfill it or, or in that in, not even that day like a down in that area of the day like the kicking for instance but he's having an exceptional um day playing playing the game and commanding the field let him focus on that and we'll pick up the pieces and move forward and it's not going to be one of those things where they're harassing the player for having a bad performance in that moment it's an uplifting and um what do you call it like a, a family a family unit moment which i absolutely loved about that and i could tell just after that moment things clicked you saw he made that that no look kick and he just like just opened his arms just like he said just releasing that pressure releasing that energy releasing that emotion and just like the like finally like letting the world off of his shoulders and then Arden Sir just made an exceptional catch and just you know scored the try and I loved how the team were the forward I it wasn't Dwayne um I have to think of the forward's name but he was talking about he was so far back from the play developing and happening where Arden Sir scored and he had the the choice of sitting back in the backfield getting more time to rest getting more time to recover but instead of thinking about himself and sitting back and recovering in the backfield, he ran down there to celebrate with Ardenser and the rest of the team. And that's what creates a strong, powerful unit because anybody would just sit back there for playing that amount of time, having a grueling game. You know, you're tired, you're a bigger man. Being a forward, you're a bigger man. And they're, they're always in scrums and using all their powers. Their legs are heavy. For him to say, it's not about me in that moment, I'm gonna go celebrate with my teammate says a lot about him and it says a lot about the south african team where they support one another it's not about the individual it's about the team as a whole it's about the country as a whole and they're playing for something bigger than themselves it's that mission they say although although the country of south africa is going through their adversity their term their turmoil their struggle the box are there to be that unit that uplifts the nation, that gives hope, that gives inspiration, that motivates, that inspires to where a South African can look at that team and believe in themselves, believe in the next day, believe in hope, have the hope that things are gonna get better. Seeing all of these, all of these men, excuse me, from different backgrounds, black, white, whatever have you, ethnicity, all that's wiped off the table. They come together as South Africans in the nation and build and grow together and achieve and accomplish together. Winning a World Cup as a unit. It's not about race. It's not about social class. It's not about where you come from. It's not about skin color. 
none of that stuff it's about being a south african it's about being a springbok and having that unity having that that faith and belief in one another and doing it as a nation doing it as a nation together and i think it's so inspiring to see that that's the that's the beauty of sports you can see all of these people from different uh demographics and uh backgrounds come together lay all the polit political stuff aside and come together and do something incredible as a as a team to uplift a nation and to show that we are just together. we're together no matter where you come from we're people we're living the human experience we are one let's support one another let's grow let's achieve together and we can do it with love we can do it with, with the positivity we can do it with passion and we have built up that pride in ourselves and our nation and just showing that we can come together in unity i absolutely love that to me that was the theme of this episode and um I really enjoyed it, crew. I'm excited to see episode two. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. I would love to hear it in the comments below. And uh, also drop into our Discord. We have our Discord channel now open. We um, use it as a community. I call it our digital pub. We're sitting there having a drink together, having some laughs outside of the game where we can share content together, share your rugby photos, have conversations about club matches or whatever you want to talk about in there. It's our time to talk and connect offline. So I have the QS and Discord set up. Drop in the descriptions below to check that out and to join in. Looking forward to talking in, talking to uh, talking to you in there and just having great fun banter crew. But as always, I really appreciate all your love and support. As always, I'm excited to dive in, into these last four episodes of this season season absolutely enjoyed it and i appreciate your recommendation on having me check out this this documentary it's been absolutely incredible crew i love you i appreciate you always stay laser focused on your dreams and your vision and remember that you're in control catch you on the next one all right peace